Hi everybody and greeting from London. Uh, I know everybody must be excited about all the announcements that have already been made and many more to follow. We have some exciting news ourselves to share and although the title of this talk is probably going to give away a lot, before I reveal everything I would like to talk a little bit about wallets. So when we look at all the money or currencies that is associated with blockchains on public addresses, you can inherently know that these, ad these addresses have corresponding private keys or passwords, if you wish, uh, to spend that money. The ability to spend that money and securely storing your private keys happens within a wallet. So you can imagine that the $2.2 trillion worth of cryptocurrencies are stored in some wallets in some shape, way, way shape or form. Um, in this way, the typical assumption that wallets are merely intended to send and receive monies and view your balance is mute. It was in the early days of cryptocurrencies that you needed to have the complete copy of the blockchain in order to actually see the balance that was associated with your wallet. However, Satoshi envisioned a new type of wallet which would later be called the Light Wallet. Now, the goal of the Light Wallet is to have universal accessibility for everybody regardless of the infrastructure that you have at your disposal. Uh, an almost inevitable consequence of making wallets lighter was the adoption of blockchain technologies on mobile phone and the start of making UI and UX better and easier for everyone. Looking at the growth of blockchain adoption, we can't fail to observe the enormous growth in wallet diversity. In recent years, we've seen an increasing diversity growing from simple swap functions to NFTs to over collateralized loans, voting, yield farming, or even self repaying loans. Those dApps have become increasingly more sophisticated and tailored towards an expert, an expert audience. By the way, if none of these previous mentioned features mean anything to you, please do stick around. Because in the end, we know that when technology reaches its saturation points for all the experts or early adopters, then the question inevitably arises, how do we make this accessible to all? So let's start thinking about this question. What is needed to make these products accessible to all? What are the gaps? As a product person, I always ask myself why people are doing what they're doing and what motivates them and how can we do better? First and foremost, we need to make it easier for the majority of the people. Things like yield farming, UTXOs, epochs, or even delegation is detailed information that is not necessarily accessible to everybody, and we need to do better to make it more accessible. When we really look at everything that's in the market, and there is a lot, we need to come to the conclusion that we can't build everything for everyone. That means that we need to start thinking about modular wallets. We need to have core wallet features and then allow the user to decide what is important to them. We need to have some sort of a dApp store that the user can select what kind of dApps they want. When we open up the dApp store for developers to publish their dApps on it, we need to have some form of identity so that both the user and the developer can know and trust each other. So this means that we need to start having a notion of self sovereign identity. You are the only one that controls your assets in the same way that you own your identity. You should be able to share and revoke access to it. On top of that, when we send money to friends, we don't want to scan a QR code or type in an address. We want to type in a name and transfer the money to the person without worrying about it. The same thing goes for, vo for voting. It's one person, one vote, and your identity is important in that. And yes, in the end of the day, when you do your taxes, the taxman needs to have your identity in order to prove your ownership. All of this needs to be core concepts within the wallet. Last but not least, security in your wallets. In your wallets are your funds, the identity you have, the art you bought. In essence, it's a representation of yourself within the blockchain system. This means that we need to go through extraordinary measures to take to secure the self. For this reason, we need to have hardware integration into the security, but try to do it in a non-evasive way. We can't have a trade-off between usability and security too much. But I don't want to keep this presentation as simply my musings around what I think the light wallet needs to look like. We actually need to start mapping out how these needs look like. Now bear with us, uh, it's early days and we've decided to call this project, Project One. 
as in one wallet, one world, for everyone. Many hours have already been spent on this, and lots of people from both inside and outside the community have shared their insights with us. And I would like to personally thank each and every one of them for their contributions. So without further ado, I'll hand over to my colleague Dan, who's going to present on a part of the, on the collective inputs that we've gathered from all of them. Dan, take it away. Thanks, Alex. Hey, everyone. I'm Dan Smith, broadcasting live from warm, sunny London. Let's jump straight into Project One. As Alex said, Project One is still in its early development phase and it's evolving at a rapid pace. As well as being light, fast and simple to use, we've taken a modular product approach, utilising both community and internally built products unified in one experience. Product One will truly be the go-to platform for our large user base. The journey begins when you download the Project One extension from your browser. We learned that our community wants to understand product features, fees and the security in place as early as possible so they can make an informed decision to whether the product is right for them. So we created intro screens that provide all of this information as soon as you launch the extension for the first time. You'll then need to set up your wallet, name it, create a spending password and back up your 24 word passphrase. Once you've done that, you're ready to enter your Project One wallet. From your wallet, you'll be able to connect to dApps within our ecosystem. Yes, that means jumping into DEXs like Sunday Swap or ADAX to swap your favorite tokens. You'll be using platforms like Artano and TNFT to mint or purchase NFTs. How about Liquid or Meld to lend and borrow? The innovation taking place in our ecosystem is amazing, and we're really enjoying seeing the unique projects released from the community. From the extension, you'll be able to delegate, View your activity, send, receive, and store not only native Cardano assets, but also Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and more. Project One will be a multi-token wallet. Interoperability is something we've always strived to achieve, and we'll be bringing these capabilities to Project One. Now, if that wasn't enough, the product really comes to life when you hit the launch app button, which opens the web app the full light wallet experience, enabling access to Cardano's entire ecosystem. By default, you'll land onto the crypto page. Here, we'll provide you with an overview of your balance, delegation rewards, token balances, recent activity, along with charts and graphs that display historical data, portfolio performance, and more. Selecting a specific token opens its subpage, which displays your balance, recent transactions, price history, and an alternative way for you to send. Now, let's talk NFTs. We've seen what you creators have been up to in a Cardano space, and frankly, we're blown away. Space buds, Rhino generation, claymates, Cardano bits, Cardano kids, the list goes on. The creativity in this space is already heating up and we're super excited to see the upcoming projects landing on Cardano. So we're happy to reveal that Project One will feature a page dedicated to your collectibles. Let's take a look. Here you'll see all your NFTs in your wallet displayed in a simple gallery view. For you NFT wells that have quite the portfolio, you'll have search and filtering functionality so you can find the NFT you're after. Opening one of the NFTs will take you to a sub page which provides further information about the asset, including date it was minted, owner address and metadata. From here, you'll also be able to send your NFT. OK, let's navigate over to activity. The activity page provides you with your entire transaction and rewards history. One of the main features the community felt was missing from wallets is the ability to download your transaction history in CSV format. So you'll be pleased to know that we've added that functionality right here in Project One. You'll also be able to search transactions and filter by date ranges, specific tokens and rewards. Opening up a selected transaction will provide you with added information such as the send from, to addresses, timestamps, transaction hash, and metadata. The Delegation Center is a new approach to how we showcase state pools. We've learned that we need to design a system that provides an experience that ultimately enables users to make a more informed decision when choosing a pool to delegate to. 
We achieve this by providing filter and sorting functionality of pools based on your own preferences. We also have a category section so delegators can select the pool category that resonates with their interests. Whether it's art, mission driven, country specific, educational or business related, there's something for everyone. We've learned that this approach will help provide a more meaningful delegation experience to the community. And for those who are unsure about what pool to delegate to and need a helping hand, the featured pool section provides a selection of our recommended pools. We also learned that there needs to be more education on the how staking works on Cardano, how pools are ranked and how much delegators can potentially earn. So we've included a section not only within the delegation center with articles, tools and guides, but we have an entire page dedicated to learning. Selecting a state pool opens the subpage with further information about the pool, its performance details and social links. From the state delegation panel, you can enter the amount of ADA you want to delegate and start earning. Or with multiple delegation baked in, you'll be able to delegate to multiple pools, which provides diversification and also helps to further decentralize the network. Let's check out the DAP store. Now, if you're a DAP developer, this is where you'll want your product to be listed. The DAP store is your gateway to the DAP ecosystem. You'll be able to search specific projects, navigate through our category section, filter through projects based on your preferences, and explore our new popular and trending DAP sections created by us. Selecting one of the DAPs opens the subpage which contains further information such as a detailed description, creator info, statistics and direct access to the DAP itself. Once on your chosen DAP, simply connect to your wallet in one click. Simplifying the blockchain for mass adoption is a mission that drives our organisation. This is why identity and privacy are two major focus points for us. Our concept for the Identity Center puts you in control of your personal data right inside the wallet. You'll be able to share and request credentials, control who can see what details and revoke access at any time. By utilizing these capabilities from PRISM, you'll be able to instantly prove your identity in a single click, allowing you to skip past the often long-winded KYC process when interacting with dApps that require it. And finally, let's go over to voting. Each ADA holder is a voice in our ecosystem. Your holdings give you voting power. Don't forget that participating in the governance is rewarded, giving you the unique opportunity to decide about the future of Cardano whilst earning rewards. Our vision for the voting centre allows the community to participate in the governance of Cardano by voting on improvements and new project proposals directly from Project One. As mentioned earlier, Project One is moving at a rapid pace. We'll continue to work with the community to create the best user experience possible for this product. So please do watch this space for further development on Project One. And that's all for now. I'd like to give a massive shout out to those from the community that took part in our interview and testing sessions. If you'd like to take part in these sessions, please reach out to the community team. Until next time, cheers.